Hi guys, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about water salutes. Where do they come from? Why do we do them? And are there any risks associated with doing a water salute? So stay tuned. Right, guys, this video is brought to you in cooperation with Cambly. Now, Cambly is an app and a website that will help you improve on your English skills in the most affordable and economical way possible. They will hook you up with a private tutor of your choice. And if you want to check it out for 15 minutes for free, use the link below. Right, guys, so water salutes. Where does it come from? Now, as always, when it comes to traditions within the aviation industry, it almost always has its roots within the maritime industry. And this is the case with water salutes as well. So back in the old days, uh, tugboats, which also serves as firefighting boats, uh, would be celebrating, for example, the launch of a new ship or the retirement of, an air, of a captain uh, or a special occasion of any sort by shooting the water cannons up over the ship or onto the ship as it was leaving harbor. Okay, so that's where it came from. And the first time that the aviation industry started doing this, we don't know exactly who was the first one, but we know that back in the beginning of the 1990s in Salt Lake City in the US, it started to happen on a regular basis. And after that, it has kind of spread throughout the aviation world. So now pretty much all the airports uses this procedure or this um, tradition whenever something special happens. So typical times where you might see a water salute is for example when a, a new route is being launched from an airport or if uh, for let's say that the football team is coming back from the World Cup after having done a great job they might get a water salute or Things like, for example, Donald Trump got a water salute after he was elected to office. Uh, when he was taxiing out in his 757, uh, he got a water salute as well. So typically it's being done by the airport as a show of respect, maybe to a, um, to a captain that is uh, going into retirement, or even if there's an air traffic controller that's going to retirement and they know he is or she is traveling out with the aircraft. Um, so the way that it's typically done is that two firefighting or more firefighting um, cars would drive up, stand facing each other, and as the aircraft is taxiing in or out, they would uh, put their water cannons up and they would shoot it to form an arc over the air aircraft as it's taxiing out. Right? Now, talking about risks, we always have to talk about risks when we're talking about uh, the aviation industry. Um, the aircraft, sorry, the airport needs to plan when they can do a water salute like this because uh, typically, any time an airport is open, it needs to have a minimum of firefighting equipment available. So if it's going to use two of its firefighting vehicles and those are going to be using up their water and they use about 3000 gallons of water during the two minutes that a water salute typically takes, well then either they have to be able to go and quickly recharge before this aircraft is supposed to depart or they have to have some standby firefighting equipment in case someone else maybe there's someone on approach or someone taking off behind this aircraft that needs help so they always need to plan before they do something like this uh, other things and i promise to talk about things that might have gone wrong when it comes to water salutes and of course they have anytime uh, people are involved in doing anything there's always a chance of someone making a mistake and during uh, one of virgin atlantic's inaugural flights from i'm not going to say which airport it was but from the uk to a new destination in the us uh, they were getting ready to to taxi out to take off for the first time to this new destination and the airport have had uh, decided to celebrate this with a water salute the problem was that when the, uh, the aircraft started coming closer, probably one of the firefighting guys got nervous and instead of hitting the water button in the, uh, in the fire truck, he hit or she hit the foam button. Okay, so no one noticed it, of course, and when they started the water salute, it ended up with foam covering the entire aircraft, covering uh, static ports, pitot ports, engines, APU inlets, and the aircraft had to stop, taxi back into gate, all the passengers had to get off, the, uh, the flight was cancelled, and it took thousands of pounds in cleaning efforts by the engineers to get rid of all of the foam. All right. 
Other things that might happen and uh, which is really, really hard for the airport to know, but the, that we as pilots have to be aware about is if you've seen my episode about why the, there are black lines on the wings of the 737, you know that I talked about in that episode something called cold soaked fuel. That's when you've been flying for a long time at high altitude. Uh, the fuel have then, you know, taken on the, the cold temperature of the outside air, which could be down to minus 30 degrees. And then if we've taken a lot of extra fuel, if we're tankering fuel, for example, we might have so much fuel in the tanks that the fuel, the cold fuel is actually top, touching the top of the wings. Now, if that fuel is super cool, if that fuel is say minus 10 degrees and we drive through one of these uh, water salutes, well then of course the water is going to fall down on the wings and it's going to um, create clear eyes. And this has happened to, um, to one of my friends actually, who, uh, who did uh, the inaugural flight to a destination, they got a water salute and it ended up with loads and loads of clear eyes on the wings that they had to remove before they could, could depart. But otherwise, all in all, this is a fantastic honor Right? It is one of those fine traditions that I'm happy that we've taken up from the maritime industry. It's a great honor to be flying an inaugural flights and it just makes it that little bit extra special uh, when you see those you know, beautiful arcs of water spreading out over you as you're taxiing in right? or taxiing out. So that's all I had about water salutes guys. I hope that you found it interesting and like I said in the beginning of the video I want you to use this link below to check out Cambly. Now, I'm only letting companies or brands that I think will add value to you be represented on my channel. Like Cambly is one of those. It's one of the most uh, affordable ways for you guys to get a private tutor to actually adapt the English course to you. So maybe you are you know, really, really skilled at, um, at writing, but you, you, don't, you don't really have the pronunciation needed or you're, you're lacking a little bit of vocabulary. Well, in that case, the tutor will be able to find that out and he or she will be able to help you with it in exactly the way that you need it. Also, there's aviation uh, tutors in there. People who are actually pilots who knows what kind of level you need in order to succeed to get at least your level four in aviation English. So use this link below. You get 15 minutes for free to check out whatever tutor that you like. Try out both the app and the desktop version. Have an absolutely fantastic day guys. As always I hope that you are working hard to fulfill your dreams. I hope that you're succeeding and if you're not make sure that you use whatever problems that you have at stepping stones to reach higher. Take care of yourself and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.